Mountains are a really great element for the backgrounds of the scenes and characters you paint, as well as for a focal point or cherry on top in environments. It effectively and easily makes an illustration look less flat when done right, due to the range of depth you get when adding something so large and distant to a scene. Because of this, knowing how to paint them is very useful, so here's some tips, tricks, and methods you can try out for yourself that have helped me a lot. Shape is a good place to start. It might be instinctive for you to start with a single curvy line, but typically, angular is is a much better way to go. A lot of mountains you see might have a sort of overall curve, but the silhouette is mostly jagged. This simple shape is a good start, and you could jump straight into painting after this. But since mountains aren't flat, you will also need to consider the 3D shape it has. A typical mountain will have various flattened sides facing different directions. This is tricky to figure out, so you might want to help yourself out by first piecing together several simple 3D shapes, and then working off of that. I recommend having some of your planes roughly facing one direction, and the rest facing another. Having these two sides makes lighting easy to figure out and look nice. One more thing you should consider at this phase is the size of these shapes that make up your mountain. Like with just about all other things, all of your shapes being about the same size is boring and looks unnatural. Try to mix it up by using really big shapes, medium shapes, and small shapes. For painting, I usually start with a filled in silhouette and draw in some line detail to show where my planes are. Doing this with a clipping mask layer on top so I can remove these lines once I don't think I need them anymore. I used a basic shadow color to fill in the shape, and if this is set during the day, there's a good chance there will be direct sunlight hitting one of the mountain sides. This is where knowing what parts of the mountain are facing what way is especially important. Pick a direction for the light to come from, and paint in light on the planes that face that direction. It's best to add light separately with another clipping mask layer, possibly painted in with a pale yellow color or similar, and with the layer set to a light-related blending mode. Try out a few, like hard light and color dodge, and know that you can always change it later, so don't stress about it too much. You don't have to, but at this point I find it best to hide my line layer since I don't really need it anymore. Working underneath your light layer so that the light stays on top, start painting some detail. To add rocky texture, get a brush of your preference and use strokes with a slight hue or value shift. This can mean opening up your color picker with your original mountain base color, moving the slider to a different hue, maybe making it slightly lighter or darker, painting some scattered strokes with that color, and then repeating. Assuming your original color was something not too far from gray, all of these colors should look quite similar and so create a subtle textured look. You can use a full range of colors, or a limited selection of hues, either way creating a neat textured effect that works well for rocky cliffs, among many other things unrelated to mountains. You can also add some snow. Pick a color that will be your snow and shadow, which you might know should be similar to the sky color, just maybe a bit darker and more desaturated. If you're still painting underneath your light layer, the snow should brighten up in the sunlit areas. If the light layer doesn't seem to be achieving the right effect for you, now is a good time to go back to your light layer and adjust the blending mode, opacity, or whatever else of that layer until it looks the way you want. For the placement of snow, you can try to put most of it on higher up, upwardly slanted areas, but I feel like there isn't much of a rule here. Cover the entire mountain if you want. More important than where you put it is to try to use fun, sharp shapes rather than just round blobs like I did here. If you have a really large section of snow, it looks good to have some gaps inside the snow shape where the rocky surface of the mountain shows. I've mentioned in several other videos the concept of putting your higher level detail in either the light or shadow areas of an object, and for mountains it's no different. You have the option to go very extreme with this, since this effect does tend to get more dramatic with the giant far away things. Like in this picture, there is detail in light, however these shadowed spaces look incredibly empty, and that really sells the feeling that this mountain is big and distant from us. Alternatively, this artist more often does the opposite, making the areas of light mostly blank and washed out, and painting colorful texture into the shadows. I've decided to put more detail in shadow for my painting, so I simply get a light color with partial opacity and paint out some of the contrast, and then possibly go in and add some extra texture and detail into the shadow area. Another thing you can try that I really like the look of is having the shadow area more clearly reflect the surrounding area. What I mean by that is, pretty much just adding more blue to the shadow areas that face upwards toward the sky. Clouds tend to build up around mountains, so let's add some. I color picked the color of my snow and shadow to get an accurate color for my shadowed clouds. Then, similar to the mountains, paint some simple texture with more blue on top from the sky and subtle warmth on the bottom. Finally, I think just a bit of direct light will complete these simple clouds and make them feel like a part of the scene. 
I also want to add some more mountain peaks behind this one, even further away. This effect is pretty easy. I paint just a simple version of the mountain I already have, using all of the same colors and values. And then to get the effect that it's further back, color pick the blue sky color and paint a semi-transparent blue over these new mountains. This both lessens the contrast and makes it blend into the sky color-wise. For an overhead view of a mountain, a single peak could start with a basic cone shape. A cone does not make a good mountain left the way it is, but working off of a simple shape gives you a base for the perspective. You could also think of this as like an object such as a sphere with a blanket draped over it. But again, don't take this too literally. This doesn't look like a very good mountain as is, but can be a starting point to add more sharp mountain-like shapes onto. For mountain ranges, you might find it useful to start with a tent shape with sloped ends, which you can then stretch curve, or multiply, to then work over and get different types of mountain ranges. You won't often see a mountain this large stick out of completely flat ground. There will instead be smaller peaks and cliffs in the surrounding area. At a certain elevation, you'll stop seeing snow, and might start to see some grass in the mix. If you have a wedge-shaped cliff, grass will grow on the less steeply sloped of the two sides, since at this viewpoint, these smaller mountain features will be much closer than the mountain peaks. You'll see more detail, such as individual rocks. Adding visible rocks onto these cliff faces and scattered around grassy slopes will sell the depth of this scene even more. The same goes for trees. Putting a tree up front and a tree way back here shows just how far the distant area must be for this tree to be that small in comparison to the closer one. With those details and some extra fun story elements added, I'd say this is done. Some of the things I mentioned in this video, I explain with more detail in this video on screen, so if you haven't seen this one yet, I recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching!